What's up everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video we are once again at Blade Show in Atlanta. Blade Show 2023 is kicking it off this year and this is easily the biggest Blade Show yet. I've got to say the Balasong area is actually really awesome this time though, whereas in previous years it's been a little bit separated, there's been a little bit of disparate elements all coming together. This year, instead, we have a whole Balasong row. So there is almost every maker put together into this little area, and it's been really nice seeing everybody be able to just congregate here and really make a nice little home for all of our flipping cells. On that note, actually, this next booth we're about to talk about has a lot of that diversity kind of distilled into one single area. There's a lot of smaller makers who simply don't have the opportunity to get a table at Blade Show, and Shop Soet has been doing a fantastic job of allowing these smaller makers to have the opportunity to sell their balisongs in an amazing space like this. So let's go ahead and go talk to them and see what's going on. Okay, so here we are with uh, my good friend Paul. Hello. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How right. are you doing here at Blade Show? Crazy, crazy as always, but doing great, having fun. You guys got swamped this year. Oh my God. Which I mean, you got swamped last year too. We talked to you and Dalen. You know, every time we try and keep it like, okay, how are we gonna control this and keep it mellow? Never works. Never, Never works. works. So can you explain a little bit about like your table in general? What what are you doing that's different? I own a shop in San Diego. I started with vinyl records, things I love. And the whole idea of our shop is based on things we love yep. and our hobbies. Of course, I'm really into knives, particularly Bali songs. So I started selling them, started working with Squid, started working with different makers, friends, people I know. And that, that's basically what our table consists of is mostly the main thing is original designs. I don't sell clones. I don't do that. You have to be original makers. It doesn't matter what country, where you're from. I don't sell just expensive stuff. I sell cheap stuff, as long as it's original and people want to flip it and they enjoy it. You know, we have things all the way down here from like the Wolf Design to Lady Bali Song, where we have the Orions yeah. and the Sirius. Then I got some BB Barfly, Surge of BB Barfly is oh, amazing. Yeah, look at that. That's my custom design for Shop Soet. That's amazing. And then, you know, friends like Dalen from Machine Wise and Grant Fellowship Blades. They didn't have a booth this year, so they asked if I'd sell over for them, and I did because I've worked with them before. Though so they both have their own online shops and do their own thing, so I don't really pressure them. It's just like if they want help, hey, I'll help sell your stuff. I love it. I collect their stuff as well. Well, I think honestly that's wonderful because. I don't know, there, there's something about you bringing this diversity on a single table to the convention that is really lovely. You know, people don't get the opportunity to sell here very often. Like this, it, it's not a super exclusive thing, but it's not cheap either. Getting in here and allowing smaller makers to come in like For sure. Wolf and like allowing them to have a place to distribute and to show off their products. Also, I just love all of the selection here. It's a very colorful display. Yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of different beautiful anodizations down here, and then you've got the uh, different aluminum down there. I like that some of the uh, LDY stuff comes Cerakoted. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Looks really nice with the coating. I've heard the name Shop Soe, or Shop Soet, Soet. sorry. It means um, sweet or mellow in Afrikaans. Oh, okay. I'm always making sure to respect the makers pay my bills, pay them for what they've sold through me or bought or send to my shop and do things the right way. Have a fun time, but do things in a legit way. I think that your level of professionalism is very commendable. Thank you. You've always been a very professional person to interact with in a very good way. So like, I love to see you extend that into your business mantra and really like respect for the makers is another thing that drives me as well. Absolutely, the makers have inspired me a ton just like my own knife if we want to get it. it's a good segue and yes it, it is but uh this is an inspiration from all the makers that i've admired i've taken a little bit of every knife that i have in my collection and i have a pretty large collection it's a little flavor from everywhere you know but with my own originality you know i want to have my own style obviously and i took it to some extremes with handmade box I did, I did all these by hand. Every single one is numbered and they're magnetic boxes that close oh. like that. 
and then it becomes a tray where you can work on the oh knife. Oh my god, it's like a display thing too. So you, you can, can set like your set knife, there. work oh. on it, put your screws. And then I handmade all these cleaning cloths as well. I handmade all the sheaths as well. Thanks to Dylan at Area 51, gave me some tips about how to do this. Awesome. I mean, everything's been like tips and tricks from different people. So this I do is... woodwork as well. I do all the shelves, all the woodwork at my shop. So oh. when I was looking at packaging, I was looking at, I'm like, no way can I sell. I got to make my own box. Yeah. So I kind of went to the extreme and made this really, it's got a nice, like, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, that clothes is great. Yeah, it's That's got very a good satisfying. Good sound. Very satisfying. So Acid Works is your company? Is my company, yeah. And so is this, this is all part of the unboxing experience for the Balasong? Yes, exactly. There's also, when you open it, there's a soundtrack. Because Zyzix is a, not only a town in California, but there's a planet called Zyzix. And I made a soundtrack about the planet. So it's a story talking about the planet, how it came to be. And then there's two tribes on the planet. There's the Incept and the Abyss, and they both have two different knives, two different Whoa. shapes. On this planet, gravity is altered, so the only weapons that really work are gravity knives ah. because they float and they spin, and so right. they, they fly on these weird pterodactyls and they spin their knives. The Zyzix is a dangerous instrument to be used with caution. Zyzix is not just a word or a knife. It's not just something thought of by a crazy man in the desert. It's also coordinates to a planet in the outer limits of deep space. You know, it's a whole fantasy story and I, I really wanted it to be like this extend the ex unboxing experience into like where you can trip out on your knife and listen to the soundtrack. So there's a companion story, universe, and album for this Balasong. Yes. That's so cool and such a unique concept. <laughs> I'm a musician to start with, so I, I love music. So it's your music on there. Oh yeah, uh, everything I did on there. Well, my friend played bass on one song. Uh -huh. It's different music for me too, because it's more geared like it's like electronic, like craft worky, mixed Whoa. with a story. Like you'll you'll see, but then each knife comes with a certified card that tells you the number, signed, what's in the box. The the amount of detail that you've put into the unboxing experience of this knife is honestly I'm gonna be honest, that's it's unmatched. I have never seen this level of detail put into the unboxing experience. It's not thought of a lot, and it's also not appreciated enough because unboxing experiences are really hard. It's something that I've struggled with uh, a substantial amount when it comes to like our YouTube channel and working with the merch. Figuring unboxing out is is the fucking fun part. It's like, everything. It's, it's so fun when you get a new knife. You're like waiting in the mail, looking for the postman. The postman shows up, and then you get your box, and you're sitting on your couch on the coffee table. It's that moment, it and I wanted moment. that moment to be like several I really moments. Want, you know, I said, you know, of course I want the knife to flip good. We can talk about the knife if we want. I would love to talk about the, the knife. knife. So when I first designed the knife, it was based on function. I wanted a long, thin blade, not too thick for flipping yep. to me. I wanted a little chaplain area, but I wanted nose weight. And I just drew this long blade and drew a square up here in my pencil drawings. Yeah. I was like, somehow I'm gonna make weight up here. Cause to me, when you're flipping something, you want it to kind of have the momentum so it'll fan nice. Yeah, you want it to carry. Then I just started adding that and I kind of came up with this shape that I was like, okay, added weight. If you look, the jimping is like three big jimpings. Yeah. I feel like it stays stylish and not extreme. The chamfered edges give that grip where you need. There's little sideways slots, oh. and those actually do give a grip. That's um, a really small detail. A very that. small detail, but when you're flipping it and you're doing this kind of thing, it, you do feel it, it's subtle. Do you mind if I try it? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll yeah. flip this one and then I'll do the sound test. Oh yeah. Oh, dude. It feels great fanning. Yeah. 
And this then I didn't fantastic. want horns, like no horns to interfere with the feel. Yeah, I so like that. I'm trying to just add my cool flavor. Yeah. And appreciate everything else people are trying to do. And that's to me is like, what is cool about Bali songs? Cause I related a lot to like making a guitar. There's a lot of guitar makers yeah. and they're all doing something cool. There's a lot of skateboard decks and they're all really cool. And this is our version of that. So like you take little flavors and appreciations of different makers and you make your own thing. And I think that, that that's what, what our community a little bit is about, especially for makers, because it's three chunks of metal in the end. Yeah, it's you're really right. <laughs> it's like, what are you gonna do? So you make your own flavor to it. I think something that's really cool about Bala songs is that there really is an artistry behind sure. their design and their manufacture, just every part of the process. The function, the feel. It's I mean, there's a lot really of detail. Cool. Oh, wow. I can already feel the tune on this one is fantastic. Yeah. All right, let's do a sound test. I like the ring that it has. It has a very nice ring to it. This is definitely not the best place for Bally ASMR, let's be honest. I'm just doing what I can right now. <laughs> exactly. This one is rounded. It's called the Abyss. Okay. And if you notice, the other one is the Incept and it's more of a straight. It does add a little bit of weight. So this one has a little bit more momentum, more momentum on the tip, but it's very, very slight. But I've been surprised at how I will notice it. I have a question for you, which is, you know, you've been here, you've been experiencing the community. What do you think is sort of special about the way that Blade Show brings everybody together? Well, because we're all so spread out. It gives us a place to finally all get together and hang out and see, yeah. put faces to our friends that are on social media and then be like, oh, that's you. There's a lot of online interaction in the Ballast And this community. brings it to reality, exactly. you know? Exactly, and it, that's really nice. And then it also brings it to a place where it's legal to do it and they're not hating on us yeah. for doing it. Being in Georgia is a very nice thing for yeah. not having to worry about like, oh, am I gonna get this like confiscated? You right. Know? That, that's a terrible fear. Thank you for what you're doing here in general, because like we had a little bit of a difficult time even getting in here to film this video, because <laughs> you guys have a lot of hype about your table. Cool. You've got Thank so many you. cool things. I appreciate the support, man. You know, we're doing it because we like it. We love it. And we're doing it because other people like it because we're all friends here, you know? Awesome, thank you so much, dude. Absolutely, it's been an absolutely. absolute pleasure. We'll I, uh, catch up later. I'll see you <laughs> probably later in the pit. Yep, all right. See you, dude. See you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Paul, for this interview. It's been a wonderful time. I loved learning about your wildly interesting ballad song and the fact that it comes with a story and a companion album. Like, what? Anyways, that's pretty much it for the moment. I just wanna say thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are incredible. And if you'd like to join our supporters, you can do so for as little as three bucks a month on patreon.com slash the Will Hirsch. And every supporter is helping us towards our goal of full on stability here on the crazy YouTube platform. So thank you all so much for everything that you've allowed us to do. And uh, we're gonna keep on going here at Blade Show. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> No, my microphone, <laughs> I need that. <laughs>